this. So today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Plesk Obsidian Web OS Control Panel and the Lightspeed Web Server on Linux Ubuntu 20.04. So to complete the setup, we're actually going to be doing it in Amazon Light Cell. And I need you to uh, sign into your Amazon account and to open up the Light Cell service. So uh, once you've signed in, click on the Create uh, Instance button. Click on OS Only and then select the Ubuntu 20.04 operating system image. Choose the $5 plan and then set the name to Plesk Server. You can use any, any other name you'd like, but for learning purposes, we're just going to use Plesk Server. So click on the Create Instance uh, button. And uh, once the instance has been created, just copy the public IP address for the instance and then open up the Amazon Group 53 service. So I've already created an A record that points to a particular server. So I'm just going to edit that record. And then I'm going to paste in the public IP address for the instance and then click on save. But if you're going to be doing this in that production environment, I actually recommend that you first set up set a static IP address on the instance and then point it to an A record just after doing that. So after configuring your domain, uh, click on the download default key uh, button within the Amazon Light Cell uh, instance. Uh, so this section will actually download the default key pair file that will actually allow us to connect to the instance via SSH. Go to the download directory and then I'm just going to rename the key pair file to plesk.pem. So this will just make it easier for me to find and remember the name of the key pair file from within the terminal application. So open up your terminal application and change your working directory to the downloads directory. And then we're going to set the permissions on the key pair file to read only. And then to connect, we're going to run the command SSHI and then I'll append the file name for the key pair file. And then it's Ubuntu at the IP address or domain name for the for the uh, Ubuntu instance. So in my case, I'm just going to connect using the subdomain uh, or the A record that I actually pointed to the Ubuntu server, and then just press end. So you'll actually get a verification prompt, so just type in yes, and then press end. So once you've done that, uh, change uh, your root user account to, to the root user account actually. So just run the command sudo su, and then we're actually going to download and install system updates. So run the command apt update and that will then go forward to then download essential system updates that you will need for you to be able to go through this installation without any issues. So um, once you've actually downloaded these updates, the next thing that we're actually going to do is to then set a host name for the server. So run the command host name ctl, set host name. And then we're going to set the host name to Plesk Server. So we're just going to be Plesk Server. And then once we've done that, we are then going to edit the etc host configuration file. So run the command nano etc hosts. And then type in 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback IP address or the local host IP address. And then I'm going to point it to Plesk Server. Uh, services.com which is just a domain name that I have registered within the root 53 server that I'm using for this demonstration. So just type in Plesk server at the end of that uh, entry, press Ctrl O and then press Ctrl X. So just reboot the instance and the next thing that we're going to do is to download the Plesk server installation strip and to open up port 443 8447 and 8443. So on the instance uh, in the Amazon uh, Light Cell dashboard, click on the networking tab and then just below the IPv4 file section, you need to open up HTTPS, uh, which is port 443. You also need to open up uh, UDP port 443, TCP port 8447, and uh, TCP port 8443. So I'm actually, I'm actually just open up, opening up the ports now. And uh, this should take you just about a minute or so uh, to actually do this. So I'm just waiting for the process to complete. Let me just add another port. 
and then I'm just going to open up port 8443 and then uh, the next port that I'm actually going to open up is uh, port uh, 8447 so once you have all of those ports opened up you can then go back to the terminal window and then proceed with the download for the uh, Plesk server installation script. Okay, so the IPv4 file is now configured, and uh, we are going to then go back to the terminal application. So open up your terminal application, and then let me just reconnect to the instance real quick. And then after connecting, we're then going to clear our screen and change to the root user account. So just run the command sudo su. And then uh, we're then going to download the Plesk auto installation script by running the command wget. And then you need to type in the URL as to where from where from which you're actually going to download the script. This URL could change in the future. So if it actually changes, you just need to check on the Plesk server for the updated URL. So that's the URL that you need to write, to type in, and then press the end. So I'm just checking if the file is actually there. So as you can see, the Plesk server installer file is actually there. So I'm going to change the permissions on the file really quick. And then to install Plesk, just run the command dot forward slash Plesk installer. And then I'm going to specify the web interface uh, option so this will tell the script that we're actually going to be installing place from a web browser so to tell us a uh, url that we need to connect to so just copy that url and then uh, open up a web browser and paste it into a new uh, browser tab so if you get a connection is not private error message just click on advanced and then click on proceed with the connection and then you should see a login page like this. But then I didn't set a root user account password, so I'm just going to exit out of the script. And then I'm going to set a password for the root user account. So you just need to run the command passwd. Type in a password. And then it's asking us to retype that password, so which is what I'm actually doing now. And then there you have it. We've actually successfully updated the password on the root user account. So rerun the script and then type in the password that you've actually set and then click on login. So we've actually logged in using the root user account into the Plesk installer and then click on installer update product. So installing on that, that option will kickstart the installation process. Click on the Plex checkbox and then click on continue. So after clicking on continue uh you should now see a uh, new window which actually prompts you to select an installation type so select the full option and then click on continue okay so we're now, now actually continuing with the installation and uh, you should now see an operations log which shows you what is actually happening uh, to the ubuntu server so you just need to wait for this process to complete and then in the next step, we're going to complete the Plesk installation and to also install the Lightspeed web server. So the installation is actually done now. So just click on OK. And then uh, I now need you to then uh, uh, open up the login page for the Plesk uh, dashboard. So actually, before you do that, I need you to reboot the instance so that all of the changes that we're actually making will actually take effect. So just run the command sudo su. Let me just clear my screen first. And then run the command sudo su. And then uh, we're just going to reboot the instance so that all of those file changes that we were doing will actually take effect. Okay. So after rebooting the instance, I need you to update the URL for the Plesk uh, server to 8443. So for the installation, it's port 8447. And then for administration, it's port 8443. Okay. So it's now asking us to type in a username and a password. So I'm just going to use the default Ubuntu user, root username. 
and then I'm just going to type in the your root password and then let me just set my language to English United States and then click on the login uh, button so the next thing that we need to do is to specify an email address so I'm just going to type in my email address as well as to set in a password for the admin account so I'm just typing in a password for the admin account click on the proceed with a full featured trial license and then click on uh, continue so you'll see it will actually start setting up the plus panel and then it's actually requesting for the trial license and then it's going to configure the web server and also going to secure the web server so by securing it's going to be installing a free let's encrypt SSL certificate so right out of the box you will get a system that is actually secure so the next thing that you do to, thing to do is to click on extensions we're actually, we're actually, we're actually now installing the Lightspeed web server. So I'm just going to configure my VAT preferences here. I'm just going to select my country and then click on Save and Proceed. So after I've actually done that, uh, use the search bar at the top of the page to search for Lightspeed. So I'm just searching for Lightspeed now, and then click on the Get It Free uh, button. So you can see it's actually installed uh, Lightspeed, the Lightspeed extension. And uh, once it's done, the page will refresh and then I need you to click on open. So once you've clicked on open, I need you to click on the install Lightspeed web server option. And then uh, you need to scroll down and to click on the checkbox to, uh, to say I agree with the terms of uh, use for the license. It's more of like an alliance agreement actually. And then on the web admin console login, I need you to type in a password that you use to actually log in to the Lightspeed uh, web admin dashboard. And then on the additional setup page, just click on all of the checkboxes and then click on the install. So doing this will actually set Lightspeed as the default web server and it will also stop the Apache web server from running. Okay. So once you've done this, just click on OK. And as you can see, we've actually shifted from Apache to Lightspeed. So if you've got a WordPress website already installed, I need you to click on the Manage uh, Cache option. And then you just need to scan and to install all the missing uh, extensions that you need for that, for the Lightspeed cache to work actually. And uh, the next thing that we're actually going to do is to check if uh, the fast CGI option is actually enabled. So you need to make sure that the option is enabled so that Lightspeed will actually work uh, correctly. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is to test to see if we can access the Lightspeed uh, administration dashboard. So just open up the Lightspeed extension, and then uh, click on the light. Click on Lightspeed configuration, and then click on uh, Web Admin Console. You so you should see a login page that looks like this, and if you see this, then you've actually successfully installed Lightspeed. So that's been it, guys. I hope this tutorial tutorial has been informative, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.